بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفاه والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن وله ما بعد رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني فهو قولي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته all praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may his peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions, his family, and all of us who follow him. Inshallah, today I wanted to highlight verse number 23 from Surah A'raf, Surah number 7. It is a verse that all of us are very familiar with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ This was the dua of Adam and Hawa alayhimu salatu wassalam when they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And this dua teaches us the etiquette of how to make dua to Allah and the mindset that each and every single one of us should have when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something. In the month of Ramadan, many of us might have dua lists. We might have made dua lists so that we can regularly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what we desire the most. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the entire Quran in multiple places teaches us things that we should be asking for. One of the most commonly asked duas is of course the dua for guidance. Ihdina surat al-mustaqim. The surah that is perhaps recited, that is recited the most by every single believer throughout the course of their life, Surah Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a dua, whereby automatically we are always asking Allah, O Allah, guide us to the straight path. Now this particular ayah and this dua of Adam and Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam teaches us one key aspect of asking Allah, which is... That when you ask Allah, before you ask Allah for what you want, acknowledge what you are and who you are and what you have done. Acknowledge the fact that you have fallen short. Acknowledge the fact that you are deficient. Acknowledge the fact that you have done wrong. Acknowledge the fact that you were not as good as you should have been. Acknowledge Acknowledge the fact that you have faults. Acknowledge the fact that you have oppressed yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that Adam and Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam, when they made dua to Allah, they first acknowledged the fact that they had wronged themselves. Rabbana, O our Lord, zalamna anfusana. We have wronged ourselves. And this is key because we are being asked and taught Humble yourselves before you ask Allah. Humble yourselves before you ask Allah. Acknowledge the fact that every wrong that you have done, you have done and you have harmed only yourself. That every single act of disobedience is not a slight against Allah. It doesn't decrease Allah in any way, but rather you have only made things difficult for yourself. Zalamna anfusana. O Allah, I have wronged myself. I have oppressed myself and I have oppressed myself by doing the things you had asked me not to do. We should never approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an air of arrogance because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us nothing to be arrogant about. There is nothing any person can ever hold up as a reason for having even a small amount of arrogance. Walamna anfusana. O oh Allah, I humble myself in front of you. I humble myself in front of you. I acknowledge the fact that I have mistakes. I have made mistakes. I have continued to make mistakes. O oh Allah, I have made toba over and over. I have repented so many times and I have repenting and I am repenting right now and I will perhaps repent more in the future. O oh Allah, I have oppressed myself by not doing what you asked me to do. 
This is very, very important. It is not just about asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us to ask Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to grant us what we ask of Him. Yet, the etiquette of asking Allah is that we humble ourselves in front of Allah first. Acknowledge the fact that, O oh Allah, no matter what you have given me, I have always disobeyed you. In some way, shape or form. Yes, I am a human being. Yes, I am deficient. Yes, I am not perfect. And I cannot be perfect. Nor am I expected to be perfect. Yet that guilty feeling should be there. That, oh Allah, you gave me the ability and the choice to stay away from making the wrong choices. But yet I consistently disobeyed you. And all of us disobey Allah in different ways. All of us disobey Allah in different ways. And Allah has blessed each and every single one of us in different ways. But key is making sure that, oh Allah, even though I am asking of you, I acknowledge the fact I have fallen short. I have not wronged anyone else but myself when I have disobeyed you. And Adam and Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam teach us as to the reason why we are so dependent upon Allah. Why we are so dependent upon the forgiveness of Allah. Because we say, wa illam lana wa tarhamna. That, oh Allah, if you were to not forgive us, if you were to not have mercy upon us, then lanakuna min al khasirin. We would absolutely be among those who have lost. We will absolutely be amongst those who are losers. We have lost in this world and we will have lost in the hereafter. We are dependent upon your forgiveness. We are dependent upon your mercy. And if your forgiveness and mercy is not there, O oh Allah, there is nothing and no one that we can turn to. And this is something that we should always remind ourselves of. That no matter our disobediences, no matter the deficiencies and our shortcomings, Allah's mercy has never been conditional. Allah has never threatened to withhold something because we have not done what He expected us to do. Allah tells us very clearly that I will give you chances. I will give you time to rectify yourself. But ask yourself the question, have we ever felt have we ever felt the mercy of Allah being withheld from us because of our constant deficiencies? That if we did not do what we were supposed to, did we immediately feel the lack of something? Did Allah take away something from us when we did not pray Fajr one morning? No, our life perhaps continued and maybe we even got good news that day as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Mercy is such that he does not and he does not need to play what we would consider tit for tat. In other words, you give and I give. You give and I give. If you don't give, if you don't do, then I don't give either. Allah's mercy is not conditional. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is in abundance to the point where even people who disobey him, people who reject even his existence, continue to experience the blessings of Allah. And this is because Allah's mercy is not like the mercy of his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us through this dua that remind yourselves who you are in need of. You are in need of me. We are in need of Allah. If Allah chooses to withhold from us his forgiveness, if Allah chooses to withhold from us his mercy, who would we turn to? Who would help us in this world? If Allah does not grant us what we need, who can we turn to for help? Because whoever is going to help us is going to help because Allah allowed them to help us. Allah allowed them to be of help to us. If Allah does not forgive us, if Allah does not have mercy upon us, who are we going to turn to on the day of judgment? We can't turn to the prophets because the prophets will only be able to help us if Allah gives them permission to help us. So ask yourself this question every single day in the month of Ramadan and beyond. And this is something that we should constantly remind ourselves of. Who is in need of who? Who is in need of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's majesty, his greatness, his power does not increase by our worship of him, by our acknowledging of him. But we are in need of Allah. 
If Allah chooses to withhold his blessings from us, if Allah chooses to withhold his help from us, who will we turn to? Who are we going to ask? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide, bless and protect us all. Wallahu a'lam wa billahi tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.